Happy Women's Day! Today is National Women's Day in South Africa and this holiday is a celebration of the day in which South African women decided to band together and march against the apartheid government. In celebration of National Women's Day, I decided I'm going to read three books by South African authors. Now the problem is, there are many problems. <laughs> One of the problems is my very specific taste in books. I like speculative fiction, I like plot heavy books and South African literature and African lit these days favors more lit literary readers, I would say. And like if there is any sort of speculative aspect, it's magical realism or light fantasy. And I'm just not into that either. So I have a hard time finding books and I don't like picking up books that I'm not going to enjoy. And every book that I could possibly like, I have read it. I have already read it and I've enjoyed it. So that's the problem. However, I was successful. I did find three books that are to my taste that I am likely to enjoy. One is a very popular, it seems, mystery series. The other one is a thriller, I think. It's a thriller about like women killing their husbands. Like, you know, sign me up. <laughs> sign me up. And the third book is a bit of a stretch. It's a short story within an, an, an anthology about black and black speculative fiction it is it is a bit of a stretch but it counts in my search for find just in general whenever i do try and find books written by south african women specifically black south african women it's bleak you know what i mean the publishing industry in south africa is it's very easy to kind of compare our publishing industry and the types of books and the variety of books that are published here in south africa to let's say another african country like nigeria they had a head start <laughs> You know what I mean? Our publishing industry is still in its infancy. It's 30 years old. Other African countries have a 30 year, 40 year head start. We have to be a bit patient. And also maybe, you know, maybe the market for my type of literature that I enjoy in South Africa just isn't there. That's fine too. I appreciate the writers who do, who are out here writing amazing books, even books that are not for me. I appreciate them. So, um, so yeah, let's get into it. I think I want to start with the book about killing husbands. Okay, so, loved it. <laughs> okay, so The Black Widow Society is a thriller about, as the title suggests, women who are black widows. So this is a thriller written in third person and we have multiple points of view, multiple perspectives. You will enjoy this book if you enjoy those shows like The Fixer and like How to Get Away with Murder and Revenge. Remember Revenge? Oh my god. I think that go in without, just based on what I'm saying, without reading the synopsis. The synopsis, I'm not gonna lie, it put me off. I initially thought that it was a historical fiction and so I didn't pick it up, but it's not. You get like one flashback to the past and most of it is set in contemporary, you know, 2010s South Africa. I will say, the start it took me a while to get into it. <laughs> it took me a long time. The start, I was like, Ugh, I was struggling. It was giving, it was giving three. It was giving three stars because we have such a full cast of characters. We have to get introduced to each and every one of them and get to know them a little bit. So that, that was hard for me. But thankfully, um, we were getting to know the characters as things were happening. So you know, the story kind of starts immediately. There's no like you know faffing about. It does get going immediately it just does take a while to get into it because there are so many characters and i'm not gonna lie to you there are some some characters whose chapters i was skimming because it was a lot and like even though by the halfway point even though by then you've kind of gotten to know everyone there were still times where i would turn the page and i'd be like oh janine did this and this i'm like who is the, who who's that so yeah, I mean that just comes with the territory of having a book with like 10,000 people. That's gonna happen. The other thing is once you get to that point when you understand everyone and everyone's been introduced and the story is kind of moving along and you kind of see how everyone is connected and you start to see this car accident happen in slow motion like that. That, oh my gosh, that's where most of the tension is in this book. Is that you just, you're like, oh my god, I need some, I need one person to make a different decision, please. It's frustrating in a fun way. Most of the tension is anxiety, honestly. I was stressed out. These people were stressing me out. <laughs> another, another thing I would say is that some of the character voices 
most of them were distinct, you know, a lot of them were distinct, but some of them did sound a lot like the narrator, but like it wasn't, it wasn't difficult to distinguish them because they all had different things going on and they were all crazy in their own way. <laughs> I, like, I really love this book. I think what, the beginning, the first maybe 30%, like I said, maybe 3.5, and in the middle and the end, five stars. There is a plot in this book, is there? stuff happens but the plot is driven by the characters you know like those shows that i mentioned it's like that kind of they have like a thing that they need to do there isn't necessarily a countdown to a thing like i usually like in my thrillers or like you know running away from something or you know there isn't that there isn't like a main an obvious thing that we have to do but the characters do drive the story and stuff is happening. I was not bored. I wasn't sitting there like, oh my God, can something happen? Things were happening. You'll find yourself rooting for and being completely frustrated by these characters, but in a fun way, not in like a, I want to throw the book against the wall kind of way. Like I was, I enjoyed it. Also, it's like less than 300 pages. So you can read this in an evening like I did. It's so, so good. In terms of the writing, the writing is very South African in that South African authors love themselves some similes and metaphors. So there is a lot of that in there, but it isn't like a lot. It isn't too much. Sometimes it can be too much. It isn't too much in this. It's also funny sometimes like it's, you know, in a dark humor sort of way. It also has, sort of has that like aspirational 2010 South African 2010 culture, like name dropping designer stuff and cars and stuff. There's, you know, there is a lot of that, but, but you know, I enjoyed it. If you like rich people doing crazy rich people things, if you like a fun thriller that you're not going to take too seriously in a South African setting with very high stakes, a lot of tension, you know what, not even tension, it's just anxiety. If you want to feel anxious and sweat, and have high cortisol levels for a few hours this is the <laughs> this is the book for you highly recommend this book it's so good hi so i've started the danny the murder the danny maria murder mystery thing and i'm enjoying it but the beginning i almost gave up on this book i almost gave up and i'm you know I'm, I'm enjoying it well enough it is a cozy mystery and cozy mysteries are just not my thing and i think that if there was ever going to be a book that made me like and you know convinces me to like cozy mysteries it was going to be this one and i'm enjoying it well enough but i just it's okay it's just not it's not really scratching that murder mystery itch for me and i think part of the problem is that it is very slow and part of that is because like i mentioned in the other clip South African authors love their similes and metaphors and there is a lot of that in here like a lot it's almost too much and also because it's written in first person the narrator is you know the main character and boy will she describe everything <laughs> that is happening I do love it when it comes to the descriptions of food oh it's good oh my god good it's good in that but other things i'm like can we get on with it please an example of this is in right at the beginning of the book when her friend comes over from the newspaper she works she writes like a, a you know a food column for the local newspaper and she, her friend has to tell her that hey you have to convert your your food column you have to convert your column to like an advice column or something that takes so long that is paragraphs and paragraphs of and the birds were doing this and the lizards were doing this and, and we went outside and we drank in the garden and i was watching this happen and hattie clearly had something to tell me and this is this but i didn't want to push her and the birds were doing this and i'm just like let's let's get on with it please i do wish that this was tighter generally that's that's really the only thing that's preventing me from getting the most amount of enjoyment out of the story other than that i love it the main character is okay you know, she was in an abusive relationship and that is important and I feel sorry for her. I like how South African it is in terms of the recipes and also the fact that it's set somewhere that I often fantasize about moving to. And also, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous of how hot these characters are. Like they are boiling. Like it is the middle of summer in the Karoo and they're absolutely boiling and I'm sitting here and I'm just like, oh my god, I wish that were me. There's like a part that I just read a while ago where, you know, my diva died and there was a whole uh, there, there was like a whole chapter about that and you know, no comment, but you know, it did happen. It's very South African and I appreciate that. I just really, really do wish it was tighter because it is taking me a long time to read this. And usually mysteries, I read them like in an afternoon or in an evening or something. Now the story itself, 
Um, you know, the synopsis is pretty accurate. A woman has an advice and recipe column in a local newspaper and certain people start writing in and she wants to help them. Nothing has happened yet. Speaking of reading things in an afternoon, I remembered that I don't like anthologies and short story collections, so <laughs> so I'm not gonna read that. However, I did replace it with another book. And this what is it called? Behind Every Woman? Behind Every Man. <laughs> this is a chiclet women's fiction book, very short less than 200 pages i think even less than 150 pages about a woman who you know is tired of living under the shadow of her husband she's tired of just being a housewife and a mother she's married to one of the worst men ever and she's like i want to start a business and he's like no so she leaves to start her business and then he cuts her off he's awful terrible man hate him and she's not that great herself i'm not gonna lie to you they both suck they deserve each other by the end i was like great i'm happy for you they have kids they got married when they were very young and she gave up everything to be with this man and now later on in life she's like i want to start my business um it's fine i did skip over all of the chapters with the business you know because i was very much interested in the relationship aspect because this man was so bad i was like why like comically chauvinistic and terrible it's fine it's really like not my genre i don't like the sort of women's fiction you know a book about a woman just living her life or whatever it does have a very clear message and you know it is a bit on the nose but i don't mean that negatively i think it's important to remember all the time that people arrive at different conclusions about the world and about the state of the world and how the world should be at different times so sometimes a book might feel like it's preaching to the choir to you personally but some people are in the congregation some people need to be preached to for some people it's the first time hearing the sermon so you know that's not necessarily a criticism this is definitely one of those books like um, a short story I read, a novella I read earlier this year by Chimamanda. Uh, I think it was called The Village, The Visit or something. But in my mind, I call those types of books radicalizing the aunties in an afternoon, you know? <laughs> like, they're very basic. They're very like intro to women's liberation ideals and they're short. So, you know, you have them around with the aunties visit, you give them a book, you know what I mean? plant the seeds <laughs> so that what that's what those books are for this one too in the visit it was about double standards and why are men allowed to do this and women aren't and in this one kind of too and in this book it's about you know going after your dreams there's more to life than being a wife and a mother even though that's fine if that's what you want to do cool um i don't really have much to say about that book it's fine it was written in third person and the writing was fine it was also it also had that like sort of aspirational, you know, naming every label, naming the car. They were rich. These people are rich in this book. So there was <laughs> there was a lot of that and it made me laugh every time. Um, but yeah, it was fine. It passed an afternoon and I gave it a three star. I think in terms of enjoyment, I read it and I finished it. I didn't have the desire to not finish it at any point. So that's why I'm giving it a three star. So I'm going to finish the Danny... The Danny Marie murder mystery book. Uh, hopefully, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully things pick up. Hopefully things things are starting to get interesting where I am in the book currently. But I like my murders with more adrenaline. You know? Update on the Danny Maria book. Loved it. I'm gonna give it a four star. I ended up really enjoying it despite it being a cozy mystery. I I was having fun. It did drag a bit, honestly. Um, the murder mystery itself was pretty good, even though it was light on the sort of sleuthing aspect. I think maybe that's a cozy mystery thing. I don't know. I would have liked more of that. I would have liked more of a focus on the who done it. It's light on the sleuthing 
and there is some romance in this but it's not like it's not like a romance novel there's romance and it's cute and i loved it and i really appreciate that the author didn't do that will they won't they thing that cozy mystery authors do and like string the reader along for like 10 books in the series you will get a satisfactory ending at the end of this book but most of the book is maria answering letters and like sharing recipes and going to the store and doing this and doing that it sounds like something that i wouldn't enjoy but i i really liked it the thing that i enjoyed the most was her answering letters and like cooking and stuff the romance was my second favorite the murder mystery itself pretty it was okay you know it was fine the descriptions of food amazing there are recipes at the back of this book by the way i also really liked just how casually gay and diverse it was i had a lot of fun with it but yeah i just ugh. cozy mysteries are really just not my thing it really cemented that fact for me because my biggest issue with the book is you know the fact that things are not being taken seriously they are sometimes there are like really intense things happening and sometimes they're taken seriously but other times it's like oh wacky wacky goofy woo, whoopsie and an example of this is the abusive man in this like at first it's treated like a very serious matter which it is south african men love to rape and abuse and murder south african women for some reason but anyway it is a serious matter right but then at some point it, she just becomes like comic relief and i'm just like huh every time he shows up in the book it's like funny ha 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 pratfall slapstick shit and i'm like this man tortured and abused his wife for decades and now i'm supposed to be laughing that he's like in a cast or whatever that he's like tripping over and stuff i was like what is happening hated it Hated. He broke a woman's arm, and I'm supposed to laugh at him drunkenly singing a song and shooting cat and shooting a tree or whatever. I just no. I think that's my issue with the cozy mystery genre is just tone. Like <laughs> it's it's goofy, and then there are other times when it's like goofy, but there are serious things happening, and that's not like this book. This is just the genre, you know. Obviously, if you pick up a cozy mystery, that's what you want. You want murder, but like fun, I guess. My biggest complaint, however, about the book is the amount of sandwiches and tea and coffee that I had to consume while reading this book. Oh my God. The descriptions of food in this book are so good. Like you, if you plan on picking this book up, you better have like stuff ready. Just have a bunch of tea ready and a bunch of like tea stuff. <laughs> It reminded me of another author I like, Betty Neils. I know whenever I pick up a Betty Neils book, I need to give, I need to have the tea ready. I need to have a, a cake baked. You know, <laughs> like it just, it just is what it is. I know I'm, I know I'm about to make a lot of toast and stuff. Would I recommend this book? I would recommend it, but I will warn you about the fact that the writing, it didn't change. I still have the same complaint I had in my first check-in. But I think I just figured out how to read it. Like in other words, I figured out when and where to skim. Like you get, you know, you get comfortable with an author and their writing style, and then you know how to read around their style. Sometimes, an an author I do this with a lot is Kim Stanley Robinson. He regularly writes like <laughs> 900 page books, <laughs> and I've learned when and where to skim when it comes to KSR books. I think the same thing happened here. I got used to it and I realized, okay, she's about to describe a lizard in this paragraph so I can skip and move on. Um, the book was very slow, you know, it, it really was. Again, it was light on the sleuthing. There was, it was focused on the murder, but not really. There were other things happening and it was moving very slowly. So that's something, so that's something to watch out for. I personally like my murders to be more suspenseful and thrilling and fast paced, I guess, but this wasn't that. It was fine. I did, I did really enjoy it though. I enjoyed my reading experience. I loved all the little characters. I loved how South African it was. I loved all of the food. The main character is weird. Like she, <laughs> she, she talks to her food, the way that she reacts to certain things. I'm just like, what has happened? And I think that's what added also to the lack of like seriousness, the tone. You know, like she wasn't, sometimes the way she would react to, she would, the way she would react to things, like something violent would be happening and she'll make some weird offhand remark. And I'm just like, girl, this is serious. Like <laughs> your life is in danger. Again, this is a cozy mystery thing. If you like cozy mysteries, Definitely pick this up. 
Um, there is some heavy subject matter in this about abuse and stuff, and it's treated very lightly. So if you're not um, if you're not in the mood for that, then maybe stay away from this one. But otherwise, I had fun. Will I continue on in the series? No, I don't read series, and I don't like cozy mysteries. But I did enjoy reading this book. Four stars. I have a question, by the way. This woman, from what I gather, is forty years old in the book, and she's been called Danny. Isn't that like isn't that too young? I don't know if I'm gonna check out the show. I'll see. I'll see. I don't really, I don't really watch a lot of television these days, honestly. But you know, I'll check it out. The only show I watch is Abbott Elementary. So we'll see. I'll check it out. I'll see. Maybe it's good. And there we have it. That's the Women's Day vlog. I enjoyed myself. The thriller was amazing. The women's fiction book was okay. It didn't upset me. I mean, it did. It did upset me, honestly. That man is terrible, but you know, it, it's okay. And the cozy mystery was pretty good. I enjoyed this a lot, and this made me really excited for the state of South African publishing. It's so nice to read a book and just be completely steeped in your culture and your home. <laughs> and I like especially the books that don't over-explain, that are just like straight up for, you know, for South you either you Either you get it or you don't. I checked on her publisher's website, and Angela Makolo is going to be releasing another book in October I think that one looks like it's like a straight up thriller mystery someone is killed they have to find out who's doing the killing I'm so excited for that book I'm not going to read it this year though but you know maybe next year because again the type of books that I like written by South African authors are in short supply so I need to kind of I need to save them I had a great time I love South African women dearly all of my adoration and appreciation and respect for all the women who fought for us to be where we are today bye Thank mm -hmm. you.